The SQL rank functions are used to add a numeric field to your results that contains an ordered incremental value to each row based on groups you specify as the function's over clause. Rank functions can be used if you want to give your results a row number that can reset depending on the field values in multiple similar rows. Unlike aggregate functions, window functions don't collapse your groups into one, but keep the rows separate while still providing the ability to examine multiple rows in the group. I've created a table called sales with the values shown here for the demonstration. The values represent a sales report by a salesperson and product with the number of items sold. The table setup and all of the demonstration code can be found linked in the description. The row number function adds an incrementing number to each row depending on the window settings. Each new row is incremented by one in the order of one or more columns specified in the over clause. To use the window functions, we need to add the over clause after the function to specify what fields we want to use to give the function its order and how we want the function to group the data to provide the window. The row number function needs an order by in the over clause to tell the server how we want to order the row numbers. If we add in an order by quantity here, we can run the query to show the results. Here you can see that the sales rank column has a row number in the order of the quantity data in the ascending order. You can use the DESC keyword as you would with an order by clause at the end of a select statement to order the row numbers using descending quantity order. Notice that for duplicate quantity values, like the 35 items sold by Williams and Garcia, the server will arbitrarily add a value as the row number based on how the server decided to bring back the results. So this may not be the same next time you run the query. The second part of the over clause lets you set the fields for partitioning the function into windows. If we partition on the sales person name, this gives the sales rank ordered by quantity as before, but this time the row number resets back to one for each different salesperson name. You can see here that each new salesperson is a new window for the row number function, starting again from one each time we encounter a new salesperson name. Then within the window, the results are ordered by the quantity to give the ascending row number within that partition window. The rank function works in a similar way, but instead of using sequential numbers in the result, rank will show the same number against rows with the same values, and the next value will contain the next number up, skipping the number of rows that had duplicate values. If we rank ordered by quantity, you can see that the duplicate quantity values hold the same rank value as here with the Miller, Williams, and Garcia rows. Then on the next row down, the rank has skipped a couple of numbers and continued as if the duplicate rows were counted in the increment. This shows that if we're ranking sales quantities, Miller, Williams, and Garcia will be tied for fourth place. We can also use the partition by keywords to divide the rank into windows as before. Partitioning by product puts each product in its own window and each window gets its own ranking based on the order of the quantity field. We can see that for the keyboard product, Miller and Garcia are tied in second place for the number of sales. Dense rank provides a similar functionality to rank, but instead of skipping the count of duplicated values, dense rank keeps that count and continues as if it counted the duplicates as one. Before with rank, when we ordered by quantity, Williams and Garcia were tied at rank two, and you can see that this is the same case here with dense rank. However, on the next row down with Miller's keyboard product, the dense rank continues at three instead of the four value we had with rank. The results continue like this, only incrementing the dense rank count on each distinct quantity value. You can partition the results as before by adding a partition by section to the over clause to get the server to restart the count on each distinct product. The entire function divides the resultant rows into a specified number of groups. The server then works out how many rows must be in the same group in order to divide the rows. Using an entile of one gives all the rows the same number as all rows are in one group. If we use entile two, the server divides the rows into two groups based on our order by clause. Notice that since we have an odd number of rows, the highest group has one less row in it. Using three gives us three groups. And if we ask for more groups than we have rows, the entire function will allocate a sequential number for each row, maxing out at the number of rows available. If we partition by product, once again, the function resets upon each product group. Notice again that when the number of end tiles we've requested does not divide by the available number of rows in the partition, the highest number has one less row. In this video, we explore the SQL rank functions and how you can use them to get the server to provide ranked groups of results. Note that it's also possible to use the standard aggregate functions such as sum and count at a row level using the over clause to get aggregated data to appear in each row of the group. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you have any questions or suggestions on future videos and like and subscribe for more content.